and welcome back. Well, it's been a while, hasn't it? It definitely has been. <laughs> so we just thought we'd do a quick catch up. Um, what did or didn't happen in 2021? <laughs> uh, what we plan to do this year, and just things we've been working on currently. Yeah. You may have noticed a drop in the quantity of videos over the last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think 2021 there was one video. Yes. Yeah. I think so, yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, one. You could be wrong, but I'm fairly confident it was one video in November, but maybe I should check. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was hoping to bump that up. Um, I did have another video ready. Well, I say ready. I edited the actual footage and I needed to do a voiceover, but I just didn't get around to it in time. And it was Christmas themed, so I'm not going to post it yet. Okay. It, it can wait until next Christmas. Yeah, pretty much. So um, yeah, 2021. So yeah, not a lot happened. Uh, it's kind of reflective from the lack of videos. So did get a few things made. I made a water bottle cover for my mum for Christmas. I uh, made a pot holder for uh, my sister and apartment for Christmas as well. So we got a few little things done. I did my usual crocheted snowflakes, which I do in place of a Christmas card mm. um, at Christmas. So I did that. Um, but apart from that, uh, yeah, just um, the day jobs kind of dominated a lot of the year. So there's been a lot of changes in my role in particular, and then even more recently, um, your role has changed as well. Yeah. So that's kind of affected other areas of our lives over the last year. Um, also just working remotely, so we're both still predominantly remote working. Yep. Um, to various degrees in 2021, yeah. um, probably me slightly less than you, but yeah. um, that's obviously had an impact, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we have essentially been remote working since we started this uh, global event. Um, and while we've been in, I think we've worked out, I've been in about 10 or 11 days in total at this point, uh, since it all kind of kicked off. Uh, I've been remote for the rest of the time. And you're um, a bit more. varied. Um, varied at different points mm. so um but still it has an impact on on where we live so if we live in a flat it's it's not huge it's you know it's, it's not tiny but it's not a huge size either so that's that's obviously affected our productivity at home so um particularly with me i've had to essentially move that the table i used to craft on and plonk a desk there instead and have all my work go there um, which is fine. It's a little bit weird because, um, I don't know if I brought this up, but um, Phil, you made a an overhead camera, like a Raspberry Pi one, just a little low quality one, wasn't it? Yeah, so it uses the basic camera module, I think this is the Pi Zero, so yeah, it, it did the job, but it was set up directly above the craft area, it's actually attached to the ceiling. Um, <laughs> it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so we can easily get some footage and overhead of me working during the day. <laughs> so um, to be fair, I've got quite a nice keyboard now. It like uh, it's multicolored, doesn't it? The lights on it. So so that looks quite pretty, but you know, not very practical for making any craft videos or documenting anything I'm doing, apart from work. So um, yeah, so that'll probably have to be moved at some point. Yeah, it's on my list of things to do. <laughs> Might be able to repurpose that to something else. Possibly. Not sure. Put it over the, uh, what do you call it, the peak hole? The <laughs> door. I think it's a security camera. Little security camera. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, so, so anyway, so that, that hasn't helped. And I think, so then we moved my craft table into the living area. So it's in this room. And we just found that, or I found that it, it just wasn't working out because, um, the way we had this room arranged, I was just, it was in the corner of my eye the whole time, so mm. I'd be sitting watching TV. But then I could see the table, the craft table. All your, all your sewing machines set up there, they're not being used. Yeah, and I just found it already demotivating. <laughs> just, just thinking, yep, yeah, I'm not crafting at the moment. <laughs> and it just looked really messy. You know, yeah. you could just see it. And it's, you know, it's it's obviously not a specially designed craft table. It's, it's um, a dining table that someone gave us. Mm. You know. So you can see everything underneath it, and yeah, it just looked a mess, really. So, so um, what we have done, actually, which we did at the start of this year, is 
move around this room. So we've, we've essentially flipped it around really, haven't we? Yeah. And it means that now the craft table, instead of being kind of in front of us when we're sitting on the sofa like we are now, it's actually over to the side. So it's... Mm. Got a nice room divider as well. Yeah, so it's just the other side of the room divider. Room divider which uh, my mum uh, covered with this uh, very groovy orange pepper. Mm. Um, but the plus side is we don't need to see it. We did have it without the room divider as well, originally, didn't we? Yeah. And that worked quite well as well. Yeah. I think just because it's there rather than in front, it just it makes the world a difference. So fingers crossed that will actually have an impact on, on feeling motivated to craft as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I think it will. I think it will. But uh, you've got a new overhead camera there as well. So, well, almost. Uh, needs to be attached to a ceiling. Not a good one, but uh, currently it's attached to a nice tripod. Do you think we will attach it to the ceiling? Probably not. I, no. I, I don't think so. It's quite heavy. It's a Raspberry Pi 4 with a high quality camera with a telescopic lens. I'm not too worried about the weight of it. I just wonder because we've ended up. Yeah. I mean, I can't remember when you made the overhead one, but we haven't used it for many videos. In no. The other room, in the end. But I guess the main drawback on that is you can't move it once you've attached it. Cause essentially, the way we. We did it was we just like poked some screws in the ceiling, yeah, like hollow wall <laughs> ones. Um, so, it's a <laughs> so I mean, it is quite easy to take out of the ceiling there. We just need to patch up the holes, but I'm not sure I feel like poking more holes in the ceiling, That's especially as we have managed to put it on a tripod fairly high. Yeah, the main issue is if we wanted to get a shot of the whole table, yeah, although we could get a different lens for it, yeah, exactly. So that might do it, and we might be able to put this tripod up slightly higher. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Well, that is quite high at the moment actually. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm kind of looking forward to playing around with that, seeing what new angles we can get. Um, anything else in 2021? Oh, we were reviewing our living situation as well, so so as we mentioned, space is a premium here. Mm. Um, so we were looking around to see if um, there was any scope, um, possibly going somewhere else, um, but in the end we decided to stay put and as, as we've said, just maybe reconsider freshen up this place um, have a bit of a rejig mm. especially with the cost of living due to go up astronomically <laughs> um, we're, we're okay here really aren't we we're, yeah you know. we're, we're financially secure so like, no point risking you know, much, you know, a large property and then finding the, the cost of living skyrockets as it seems to be on its way to do and it's it's quite an efficient home because it is a is a, a flat you know it's quite well insulated it, it's a newish build, it, you know. It's, yeah. It means that we've got all the benefits of modern insulation, and um, probably means that our bills hopefully won't go up too much. Hmm. So yeah, I think that's pretty much. That's pretty much 2021, isn't it? Yeah, very much 2021. So let's uh, draw a line under <laughs> 2021 now. <laughs> um, so a bit about what we're currently doing. So me personally, so I've just finished a couple of sewing projects, which. I didn't expect to. So, so I've been trying out the new uh, craft space over there and I've made a couple of frayer tops. So I bought the fabric in October when we um, visited um, family in Bristol. Yeah. So we went to the fabric land there and I got the, I took a chance on this white fabric. So it was a stretch fabric, but it had that sort of unknown quantities in it. So I just thought I'd, I wanted some more frayer tops that were white um, because I like layering them with, with my mini pinafores. Um, so I cut that out at the very start of January, I believe, and I've only just finished the two last week. Mm. Um, so it's nice to finally finish a dressmaking project because it has been a very long time. And yeah, so those two are done. Um, apart from that, I've probably been focused more on yarn based projects. So, oh, yeah. so at the at some point in 2021, I was talking to my mum saying, "Oh, I kind of missed this um, story project." So I made this maybe a few years ago now. Yeah. or started it a few years ago um it was a way to use up a lot of my wool because i had so much and i wanted a way to reduce the stash so i started this 378 square crocheted thread and eventually finished it it's complete random assortment of colors it's just what i had to hand um so then my mum was like well you could make one for me because she knew that i didn't want to make another one for our home because as I mentioned, we're in a flat. Yeah. We don't need more than one through, really. I guess we could put one on the armchair over there, but apart from that. Yeah. So, 
I think the other problem as well is it would be hard to make one that matched this because it was a whole random assortment mm. of wool. So it was quite random. Yeah. So yeah. So she went. Oh, you can make me a throw for my sofa. So she ordered some wool, and I've been making some squares for that over the next few months. So on this new throw, it's not going to be as random as this particular throw because she's ordered the wool and I think she's ordered like six or seven colours so it's um it's not going to be as random. <laughs> I have to think a bit more about the layout once I've done it but yeah so I've been enjoying doing that and it's a nice portable one so if we are travelling I can um, easily pop in in a bag and bring it with me. The other project I've had is I've started a project that my dad's requested so dad if you are watching please uh, stop watching now otherwise it will spoil the surprise. I don't think he watches these videos. No, I don't think he does. Your mum does. Hi Jane. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so hopefully not watching now. But um, yeah, so I've started making a jumper which he's requested. So about maybe a month or two before Christmas he went, oh, you know what I'd really like you to make next time, you know, like for Christmas and that, is um, a jumper. So I kind of laughed because I'm, I'm a very slow knitter. I know some people can knit, knit something in that, like six weeks, you know, even quicker. I mean, to be fair, this uh, cardigan that I'm wearing now, um, my mum made in, oh, I can't remember. It was definitely less than two weeks because, um, yeah, she, she basically started making it a couple of weeks before my birthday and managed to finish it in time, yeah, which impressive. is something I definitely can't do. But she is a very fast knitter. <laughs> So, but yeah, so um, so I laughed at him when he said he wanted a jumper because <laughs> I thought he was talking about um the Christmas that's just got passed. So I was like, yeah, that's not gonna happen. I was like, well, if you give me a lead time of a year, <laughs> might get round to it. But at the time as well, I, I didn't have his measurements either, so it was just it, it was even more amusing. But anyway, I ended up getting his measurements roughly at some point. I can't remember when, but I started making the jumpers so. Um, it's actually from a pattern that I found in Women's Weekly, so um, our local library, um, the app they've got for digital magazines, um, they must be subscribed to it, which is brilliant. So I did a search for a, I think, knitted jumper or something mm -hmm. and it came up for it. It might be knitted sweater, because it's a bit more versatile. And yeah, so I found this one, so I believe it's got satin sleeves, um, and it's got quite an interesting collar. But importantly, it's quite simple because I haven't made something quite this big before. I didn't want anything that was too involved. So as you can see, I'm still on the back piece. Still uh, slowly getting the rows done on it. But to be fair, I am really enjoying it. This is quite a nice wool that I found in, um, there's, well, I mean, there's a couple of wool shops in Falmouth now, but this is just from um, the local wool shop. Uh, it wasn't too expensive this wool. I didn't want to get anything too expensive that I could then ruin. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted something that was quite easy to wash um, so that he didn't have to worry about the, the wash car yeah. on it. So yeah, so that's my progress so far. So um, yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of aiming for this um, Christmas this year. But at least we're in uh, um, mid-Feb, so. <laughs> so fingers crossed I can get everything else done on this jumper before then. Um, but I think that's kind of my project. Had any projects you're currently working on? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know, I've got a couple of little electronics kits that I got me a calculator kit about a year ago. It's taken me a year to get around to soldering that together. <laughs> but yeah, it's not too much. There's these couple of uh, electric sewing things I think we should have a look at. Mm -hmm. But it's, again, it's for any more time to sit down and start putting stuff together and coding. So I've got plenty of pizzas lying around at this point, which I can start going and testing things with. But again, once we find a time, which I think we will do now, I think hopefully this year it will be more productive. Yeah, so for 2022, so we are going to try and focus on doing some more sewing electronics, just because it it kind of marries up well to hobbies quite nicely. Yeah, it's also quite fun. Mm. Yeah, you know, it's a bit of. Uh, you got the technical challenge of trying the circuits from your fabric while also keeping it looking aesthetically pleasing. Um, which is, I think, the first. Was it the um, bookmark? Uh, yeah. Trying. So the only one, the only project that we've shared so far. So we've only done two projects, but we've shared one of them. Um, our, our one 2021 video. 
um, is the LED bookmark. And on that, yeah, we had to find a nice aesthetically pleasing design. Um, it was also a request for design from my niece, so I was making it. I was making it for my niece, um, and I asked my sister, you know, what what would my niece like as the design, and she said a castle. So we then had to work out how to create a castle design that worked with the LEDs on mm. the circuit part of it. Yeah, I got this little push button though, so it wasn't. You have to hold down a button. To yeah, because that was it, wasn't it? Because um, on the so we were kind of basing it off. Um, this is it called so electric that book? I think so. Um, yeah, so there's, there's a really good book. I think it's out of print now, but they do have a website yeah. um, that you can visit. So they've, they've got a really handy website which shows you how you can make a simple bookmark, but it is very basic um, on felt, isn't it? Yeah. And for this one in particular, because we didn't want the battery exposed because, you know, my niece isn't that old, we wanted the uh, battery pack hidden just because, firstly, it wouldn't ruin the book as much, mm. and second, it would mean that... Um, we didn't have to integrate it into the design mm. of it on the outside. Um, but yeah, the problem with that was that there's like an on-off switch on the on the battery pack. Yeah. And, you know, that wouldn't have been very practical for my niece. Very fiddly to actually use, particularly once it's given the phone break. So, yeah, it wasn't... So that's why we ended up using the push button. But these are the sort of challenges that we need to address with some of our other um, plans or projects that we'd like to make. Mm. It's like, um, we've got the Christmas bridge, which we've got a video kind of half made for. We might do some more filming just to do a, a, a new design or recreate the existing design and get out before next Christmas. Yeah, so I mean, actually, we made this brooch in something like August, <laughs> thinking, yeah, we'll, we'll record it way ahead so we can actually get it out for December, and then we never ended up doing it. I did edit all the footage, but I needed to do a voiceover to explain what we were doing, and I never got around to doing that. But yeah, that was, that was quite interesting because it's more three dimensional almost. With and so you had to fight, say, the brooch, you had the battery, a uh, little lithium, a little lithium battery, which had to be hidden away um, and secured within the design. And you have all the conductive thread running to the LED, running to the controller board, and, yeah, making that all work while also making it look really nice. So and we were hidden. trying to make it rechargeable, so mm. having it designed in a way where you could recharge the battery. Yeah. Um, it's, it's nice, it's, it's, I have to have a battery put into a battery charger and it's, it works quite nicely. Mm. But yeah, it's interesting because we're coming from two different viewpoints on it. Um, so, um, yeah, that was an interesting project that we didn't end up sharing. But I think we might end up completely re-recording it because <laughs> and making another one because there were elements that you only really learn as you go along and you yeah. realise, oh, actually, it would have been better if we'd done this this other way. Um, even from the sewing point of view, they were, you know, like, so, so it was a Rudolph badge, and I realised that I shouldn't have cut out the antlers as two individual little pieces. It would have been a lot more secure if I just cut out the whole of the Rudolph-shaped head with the antlers and just stuck it to the back mm. of the, um, because it was a different colour to the face of Rudolph. Okay. I should have done that, which, you know, if we were record it, I can do it do that way. the way that I now think would be better to do it. I mean, it might not work better, but we'll we'll only find out if we um, go through it again. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's going to be quite a big focus for 2022. Mm. So yeah, um, the style of the videos might change a bit as well, might they? So like we mentioned, we've got a different overhead camera. Yeah, so that's a high quality. So I think that's going to be really good for any sort of tutorial videos or particularly sort of videos. If someone's following along, you'll be able to really clearly see everything. So that's pretty good. And it's on one of those like ring studio lights. Well, isn't it? Oh yeah, so with that, yeah, from like, with that on, it's, it's, yeah, really nice quality, the image, so yeah, but yeah, but with uh, the new Sony there could be different camera angles and there's going to be some more new practicalities and just the filmmaking process we have to think about. Yeah, so when we first moved to this flat, we had, um, we you could go either side of this table, or the long ends anyway, um, which meant that we could just stick a camera in the front and, you know, have one at the side kind of angled to the side. I think I used to have it um, on the window, so didn't I, like a yeah. camcorder to do the overheads. And then we had um, like the camera we're using now just straight on, as we do now. But we could have it on the other side of the table. So what we used to do was just um, sync up the audio on both, and then we'd just like cut away to the different angles mm. as and when it looked best. But we're not going to be able to do that because it's against a wall now. 
um, just because it works better for, for space. Yeah. Um, so there won't be any like head-on shots, but to be honest, I think for a lot of tutorials you don't need that. Yeah. I mean, to be a bit interesting just to experiment with just how to film in this new setup. Mm. You know, if you know, keep working on drone quality that we normally do, but uh, yeah. yeah, the opportunities. Yeah, exactly. So that should be fun. Um, I think the other main project um, that I've got on anyway, um, where I can test out these different angles, is um, I'm going to do the 100 day project again, so we took, took a break last year, as I said, you know, <laughs> not a huge amount happened last year, and I'm going to do 100 days of textile cards. So I'm going to do this a bit different to the 100 days of free machine embroidery animals. I'm not going to necessarily record every day. I might record a bit of every day, but I'm not necessarily going to use all the footage. Yeah. I'm just going to do a bit of a, a collage or a, a summary video every 10 days. So, so yeah, as there's 100 days, I'm going to combine, um, so, so there'll be 10 videos essentially, or 10 Instagram um, posts, and I'll put the 10 different cards that I end up making on that just because um, it would just make it a bit less time intensive. I think especially with the um, animals, it was quite simple, it was very formulaic. And it worked well, but textile cards is a bit more versatile. And I haven't planned it as much at all. So last time I had all the 100 animals planned in a box, didn't I? And I used to shake the box, and then I used to pick out a random piece of paper and it would tell me which animal I was doing that day. So then I'd still have to look up that animal and sketch out the design and trace it and stitch it. So there's still a lot of work on the day, but this time I haven't planned it at all, but I'm making all the cards. I've got a few ideas, so you know, like I know what I'm going to do today, which is good because I need to do it after this. And then, um, you know, I've got a couple of other ideas, um, just because um, there are some other cards I need to make for other people. The other advantage of um, grouping together the cards instead of making individual videos or posts on Instagram is that I can make cards um, for people <laughs> during this time period. So, for example, um, you know, there are a couple of birthdays coming up, there's obviously Mother and Sunday, um, things like that, and it just means that I can um, create cards for people as well. Um, it will help me get a bit ahead on card making. I tend to make cards rather than purchase them, um, but I always seem to leave it to the last minute, so I'm kind of hoping this will get me really organised, so I should have a nice stock of cards by the end of 100 days. Thank you. Well. Um, but it's not going to be exclusively free machine embroidery because we are doing a bit of travelling. I think we're going away twice during the 100 day period, at least. So I'm going to, um, especially for one of them, I definitely couldn't bring a sewing machine, so <laughs> I'm going to leave it open so that I can do things like hand embroidery. Um, you know, it'll be things like I can paint textile, you know, different textile surfaces, so like luchador, I could burn into it. Um, use different techniques, reverse plique, applique, um, couching, all sorts of things. It just kind of opens it up. So there might be some cards that look similar to each other because I might use the same design but try a different textile process on them. Um, but I think it, it will be nice because it will be fairly small still, quite manageable, but also very practical so that I can, mm. I can give them to people. Yeah. Oh, and it will include postcards as well because I've got some little mm -hmm. postcard sets, which would be nice to use. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you've planned so far? I think it's mainly to make content. Yeah, so, so yeah, hopefully uh, there will be another video after this one this year. <laughs> I think there will be. Yeah, it kind of it kind of feels a bit like we we've, we've started setting up the new the new layout. Yeah, yeah, no, I've got an optimistic feeling. So it should be okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's everything. There will be content. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, so hopefully see you soon, and thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.